Entrepreneurs, welcome to the Entrepreneur Secrets Podcast, the show that uncovers the secrets to win with books beyond book sales and dominate entrepreneurship. Through exclusive author interview stories and must-have resources, you will discover some of the secrets and strategies to thrive with books and generate lasting income. I invite you to become an Entrepreneur Ambassador and join me in my mission to raise up 10,000 Caribbean entrepreneurs by 2030. Spread the word about the podcast and encourage more people to increase their impact and income with books beyond book sales. To get started, visit entrepreneursecrets.com forward slash resources and download all the resources that you need to become a winning entrepreneur. Without further ado, let's get into the show. I'm your host, C. Ruth Dale, and this is a show that gives you the stories and strategies to dominate entrepreneurship. We want you to be able to use your book, not just for book sales, but as a platform for transformation. And today, I'm going to be focusing on how I am using my book, The Voice, Grandma's Amazing Stories of Divine Guidance in Times of Trouble as a platform for transformation. So there's not going to be any interview today. I'm going to give you some ideas of what you can do to leverage your book so that your book can reach a wider audience so that you can take your message like from the four walls or from a small space to the world and how you can do more with your book because that's what this is all about. And in our resources segment and publishing tips segment, I'm going to be talking about ISBNs. And Ally did a feature on ISBNs, that's the Alliance of Independent Authors. And I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes and just read out a little bit from that article on ISBNs because many persons are still unsure about why they need ISBNs, the pros and cons about it. And I thought this was a good article to feature in our resources and tips segment. So stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Point Global. That's a marketing company run by Javit Nixon. And Point Global was one of the sponsors of our Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit. At Point, our mission is to help our clients launch new products and brands with as little risk and as much reward as possible. With a deep understanding of marketing and business concepts across various industries, Point Global finds the most efficient methods for reaching your target audience, which ultimately translates into sales. Combining new marketing skill sets and the latest technology, Point specializes in creating innovative marketing solutions that move the needle for our clients from zero to launch. Join Point today. All right, in honor and celebration of the one year anniversary of this book, The Voice, Grandma's Amazing Stories of Divine Guidance in Times of Trouble. On today's show, I am going to be premiering a video chapter of The Voice. It's chapter three, Grandma's Encounters with The Voice. And you can watch the full video on my new YouTube channel called Unshackled Queens. And so let me know what you think about the voice. And uh, I am still using this book to, you know, empower women. I'm going to be doing a book study on the voice on the channel and see how we can echo strategies that can empower women to move from heartbreak to greatness. My grandmother was one such woman. The story is that she was left homeless with seven children when my grandfather left her. And then eventually she had nine children and she asked God to give her a home. And miraculously that home was provided. And when you read the voice, you see how she was able to move from despair because of the intervention of the voice. Of course, the voice is 
we're speaking about God for those who are persons of faith because she would hear the audible voice of God giving her directions. And she said to God that if you give me a home, it will be a place of praise to you until the day I die. And so every morning, my grandmother has kept her word at five o'clock each morning, you see that she, she gets up and she would spend time with God and she doesn't miss a beat because when she was struggling as a single mother, the voice of God brought change to her life. And to me, she's an unshackled queen because, you know, the, the circumstances that she went through, they threatened to cripple her. And at one point, as you will hear with her, with this video chapter, she felt like giving up and she was going to commit suicide, but the voice told her to go back. And so what I want to do is to start a community of support, a community of empowerment that will help women to move from heartbreak to greatness. Chapter 3. Encounters with the Voice My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Taken from John 10, verse 27, ESV version. Was there ever a time in your life when you felt you were being guided supernaturally? Are you a dreamer? Do you believe in God? And if you do, do you believe He still speaks? audibly today, people who hear voices are often classified as schizophrenic, of unsound mind, or suffering from some psychosis. In these cases, the voices and visions are often harmful and scary to the person experiencing them. In this section, you will hear my grandma's stories of her encounters with the voice. The voice that spoke to grandma was never scary and it always guided her to success. Sometimes it warned her of danger or sent her to help someone in need. She was similarly guided in dreams. In her dream, she would receive word of comfort, warnings, predictions of things to come, or encouragement to overcome adversity. The voice and her dreams gave her hope and strength to raise her children. Both were instrumental in protecting the lives of her children and grandchildren. After reading, the verdict about the supernatural will be yours. Go back to your children. The voice speaks. This was an occasion when the weight of the care of her children became unbearable, and death seemed like the only option. Grandma reports. I was having difficulty sleeping and did not know what to do. So, one day, I left the children at home and headed for the seaside in Port Maria to end my life. The children's father used to sell fish in this area. I remembered he always had a small Bible, but I could not find it. It seemed to have been misplaced. When I arrived at the seaside, I found the Bible washed ashore with a dead fish in it. Nevertheless, I was still intent on drowning myself in the sea. As I made my way into the sea, I heard the voice speaking, but saw no one. The voice spoke powerful and commanded me to go back to my children. I knew then that I just had to trust the voice to take care of me and the children. That day, the voice saved my life. As uh, I build this new channel and this new community, there's going to be weekly teachings and uh, stories and videos and interviews and book studies, and it's going to take up quite a bit of time. <laughs> and so, you can use your book in innovative ways, not just 
to sell it. And so join me on May 9th, my birthday, for this live broadcast where it's going to be a birthday celebration, a book launch, and the launch of a ministry around a book. And again, that is just an example of how you can repurpose your book to increase your reach to impact more. And uh, sales will also come as a byproduct of that. All right. So that's it for the latest entrepreneurship venture. And before we close this episode, I just want to give you some publishing tips. And that is related to ISBNs. There is a good organization of which I am a part, the Alliance of Independent Authors. And uh, when you become a member of Ally, they have different resources to help you on your publishing journey. And I am going to share one of the articles on ISBNs. So Ally has a short publishing guide and they have different guides for authors depending on the topics. And uh, if you're a member, you can go to allianceindependentauthors.org and you can find these resources. So what are ISBNs? ISBN is the International Standard Book Number and it's a unique identifier attached to a book. The purpose of the ISBN is to establish the identity and the title of the edition and the, the specific um, publisher. So each ISBN is unique to that edition of the book and it can enable tracking and marketing and it is used by booksellers, universities, wholesalers, and distributors. Think of, it is, it is a barcode. It's an identification number. In fact, you use the ISBN to create a code. It's like a tracking number for the different version of your book. And there are over 160 ISBN agents worldwide. In the Caribbean, or in the English-speaking Caribbean, we have CARICOM. CARICOM is one of the distributors of ISBNs, and you can get ISBNs from CARICOM affordably. In fact, during the Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit, we had a presentation on that, which at some point I can play a portion of that, that session so you can hear more. No. Do you need an ISBN for an ebook? Technically, it depends. Some platform or most platforms don't require it. Amazon doesn't require it. But one of the things is that Ally is recommending that you purchase and use your own ISBN, one for each format, hardback, paper book, ebook, and audio. Ally's reasoning is that owning your ISBN makes you the publisher of record rather than the platform where you've used it. So if you took a free ISBN from Amazon, you don't own that ISBN and you can't take that ISBN to another platform, all right? So one of the biggest advantages of self-publishing is that you are the publisher, you retain all rights. And so they're saying, why allow somebody else to be identified as a publisher? When you use the free ISBN on Amazon, your book will be marked as independently published, all right? So... One of the things they are saying is that not owning your ISBN adds to the indie author invisibility. And so Nielsen, Boker, and the others who distribute ISBN, they often provide reports on the publishing industry each year based on ISBN tracking. And uh, if as an indie author, you don't use your own ISBNs, then we still remain a shadow in the industry, we remain invisible. And so when they are giving the reports in terms of author income and sales and how books are doing, we will not be factored in. So here are some you know, quest, quick questions that many times you want answered. For example, if you make changes to your book, uh, what kind of changes would warrant you getting a new ISBN? So if somebody is reprinting a book and just adding a new chapter, do you need a new ISBN? Ally says, yes, whenever you add or remove a significant amount of material, altering the content of a book, you need a new ISBN. What about if you are republishing 
the book with a new cover design. Should you change the ISBN? Ally says no. A change of cover design with no changes to the content of the book should not have a new ISBN. What about if you are changing the binding of the book to paperback rather than hardcover with no other changes? Ally says yes, changing in binding always require a new high a new ISBN because that would make it a different version. So from hardback to paperback or vice versa, it requires that. What about if you want to change the trim size of your paperback? Will you need a new ISBN? Ally says yes, changes to the size always require a new ISBN. That was new <laughs> to me. And uh, each set of numbers within the 10 or 13 digits also have a meaning. And uh, here's another question. I am moving country. Can I take my ISBNs with me? Ally says that ISBNs are country specific and can only be issued by an appointed agency in each country. In the United States, ISBNs are purchased through Boca. In the United Kingdom, they are purchased through Nielsen. In Australia, through Thorpe Borker. And as I said, um, in the Caribbean, we can go through CARICOM, through your national library. So here's a final question from this that I'm going to ask because I want to invite you to go and check out this link so that you can read more thoroughly and get your questions answered. Can you buy an ISBN on behalf of someone else? Uh, they're saying no, an ISBN makes you the publisher of record. So once an ISBN has been issued, it can't be resold, reassigned, or transferred. It's an imprint. An imprint can be assigned, but the original purchaser will be listed as a publisher of record. Say like in Bamboo Sparks, you don't want to get an ISBN of your own. If you use Bamboo Sparks ISBN, you are going to see Bamboo Sparks listed as the publisher. Now, does that make Bamboo Spark owner of the copyright of your book? No. So it depends on the publishing arrangement that you have. And here's a big question before I go. There is a thing that persons are thinking that if you have an ISBN that it protects your copyright and Ally says no. So that's a misnomer, but I would want to encourage you to go and check out this article. So that's it in terms of tips and resources to help you on your publishing journey. So the takeaway from this episode, I want you to remember that your book is not just a product to sell. You can use your book to launch a movement. You can use your book as a launching pad for a mentoring program. You can use your book as the launching pad for a ministry. So your book can become a megaphone for whatever it is that you want to share. Your book itself thus becomes a marketing tool. And if you use your book to support a cause, like what I'm doing to empower women, I believe that book sales will also be a byproduct. So those are the tips from this episode and I trust that you find it useful and let me know in the comments on YouTube or on the other podcast platforms if you think this is something that you would also want to pursue from book to ministry or book to mentoring, book to movement. How are you using your books as authors? Are you just focused on just selling the book? And uh, I found that you I trust that you found the tips on ISBNs useful. This is Ruth Taylor saying, join me on Tuesday, May 9, 2023 at 6 p.m. Central for the launch of Unshackled Queens, celebrating my birthday. And the focus is on turning shame to strength and launching that new community for the upliftment of women called Unshackled Queens. Tough for now, until next time.